Uh, here's a little experiment uh, using this um, latest cell that I'm playing with that has the alum in a solid state, in a crystal, that uh, I went ahead and wrapped it up with uh, a paper towel that was soaked up in the liquid alum and distilled water, and then kind of let it dry out and see what it would do. And it formed up a, a crystalline structure that's expanding. The crystals are growing. But I've got it set up here on a solar cell and a little LED, uh, like a night light circuit, to show you the charge and the discharge on this thing. And this is the voltage on it uh, right now in the sun. And um, it's not 2.4 volts. It's about a volt and a half cell. But it, it'll show a higher charge when you push this much uh, energy into it. What I'm going to do is slide this across here into the shade. And you'll see the LED come on. There's the LED on. And watch the voltage drop off. And here again, that cell was pushed beyond where it's supposed to be, which is about a volt and a half to a volt uh, 0.8. And this is dropping off. And uh, the LED is going to be dropping off at the same time. But I... I'm very fascinated with this lead rechargeable that has the uh, lead oxide on one side of the battery and the sponge lead basically on the other side. It's basically a lead acid battery only using alum and distilled water. But the chemistry is what I'm studying right now. And uh, it's very interesting. Okay, there's the voltage dropped back down to that. Put it back in the sun. And there goes the voltage back up. And this is putting a charge back on that battery. And this is not a capacitor. Some people are going, well, you just you made a capacitor. But uh, no, and it's, it's not a super capacitor. It's actually a, a chemical reaction going both directions. And I believe what's going on there is there's just enough moisture in that cell that the... Uh, the chemical reaction can take place. If this goes totally dry, I'm sure it'll just stop. But what's different about this is there's no separator between the plates. Uh, usually in a lead acid uh, type of battery, they have a, a separator between the plates. And this battery was formed up with a solid crystal between the plates and then basically rehydrated so that it's got just enough moisture in it to let it act like that uh, lead acid battery. See, there's the voltage back up. Put it over here in the shade. And there's the LED back on again. And this is a, this is a simple night light type of um, solar garden light type of circuit. You can find these circuits all over the internet. There's nothing special about this. I just wanted to show the um, charge and discharge on this as I added energy into the circuit and then took it back out again. And like I say, this was a, a very interesting thing for me to see happen. And it'll be interesting uh, to watch this. I'm going to let this go completely dry and just see if it goes to zero as far as charge discharge and see what happens. Uh, the other thing that we're studying right now is the self-discharge on these, just to see if they have a, such a terrible self-discharge that it's not worth using. But uh, in a night light or a garden light type of circuit like this, I think it would probably work just fine because you're just charging and discharging it. You're not letting it sit. Okay, there it's gone back up again. Pull it back in the shade. There's the discharge on it going back down again there's the light back on again. And like I say, this is being overdriven. This normally sits at about a volt and a half to 1.8. So this is just taking off the overcharge right here. Let me change the scale. You see this drop back off rather quickly. Another thing is the actual ampere hour uh, on this thing is something we're looking at. It's just a uh, how much energy can you put into one of these things uh, versus the, uh, the, the plate size and such. That's the energy density. 
But anyway, that's just my little experiment for today was to try out this um, semi-solid alum crystal cell. Thanks for watching.